Richard, so great to do an uh, actual live demo with you. Um, I'm Ari Kaplan, head of evangelism at Databricks, and tell us about what you do. Hey, Ari. Uh, well, you know what I do, but um, uh, for everyone else, like I, I run product marketing for uh, Databricks IQ at uh, at Databricks. So Databricks IQ is the data intelligence engine um, that powers a lot of the um, natural language interfaces uh, currently in the product are the ones we're going to be bringing out soon. Uh, Databricks IQ also powers a lot of the kind of the, the platform features that make you know administrators' lives a lot easier, like things like liquid clustering and predictive I.O. Uh, to automatically organize data and tune performance and take all of that headache away from the administrators. So it's really like an AI system uh, that works behind the scenes to power all parts of the Databricks data intelligence platform. And, and I manage the product marketing for that. And it's super exciting since one of the reasons I have to admit that I joined Databricks was because of you. And we work together, many companies before the pandemic, through the pandemic, uh, now at yeah. Databricks, so we're on the same team. We're in Chicago, and you know, uh, people listening, Richard, show me the demo. I've seen some of this technology. It is really game changing. You know, Gen AI is not just for creating text or analyzing text, but it's so many ways to help productivity within a company. And and you know, intelligent search is one of the key ones. So why don't we uh, have you jump into the demo? Yeah. So thanks a lot. Yeah. So. Just kind of expanding on what I said earlier about Databricks IQ, um, one of the uh, sur the surfaces that Databricks IQ powers uh, is the in-product search experience. So this is, um, you know, for for any data practitioner or really anybody in the workspace looking for data and AI assets. So maybe they're looking for a notebook or a table uh, or a column or a job or really anything, an AI model. Um, you know, uh, Databricks IQ is actually looking at everything that's in Unity Catalog and leveraging all of that metadata uh, to train its AI to make um, any question that's asked of it a lot more contextually relevant to the data platform that the customer owns, not just, you know, like asking ChatGPT uh, a question that, is, that ChatGPT is not going to know anything about your enterprise data, it just knows about the internet. So. The idea here is that we're building AI based on uh, internal data and data usage within the platform. Uh, and search is one example of uh, the surfaces that benefits from this AI. Uh, and if it's OK, I, you know, I'd, I'd like to jump into a demo at some point and, and show you all this stuff in, in action. It, it, exactly. And uh, you know, one, one of the challenges that we see in companies is to build quality AI and even business intelligence, you need quality data. You need to be able to find your assets and vast majority of data has been unsearchable. So having this uh, just opens up, you know, for better insights since you're being able to find your digital assets easier. Exactly. I mean, you know, the goal of Databricks is to democratize data and AI for everybody. So we just want to make everything in the product as simple as possible and easy to use um including search right so i'm you know i should be able to type anything into that search box and it should give me something that's relevant and helps me do my job so we're actually in the um the databricks workspace right now and uh this is we're 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 kind of going to be looking at search today so you know this is where we start so the first thing I want to do is just kind of do a basic search just to kind of orient uh, you for, you know, how, how you know, basic search works. So, you know, we're both in Chicago. I love using Chicago public data. Um, so this one is based on uh, food inspections data. So, you know, people run around inspecting all of the restaurants and food facilities in Chicago and publish the results of those inspections online for everybody to download. So um, in my... Uh, in uh, Unity Catalog here, I have a table called Food Inspections. And you'll see that, you know, just doing a basic keyword search uh, gets me, it brings me back quite a lot of information here. So you can see, of course, at the top of the list, there's a table called Food Inspections. But then you'll see some other tables that mention food inspections. And interestingly, this one just mentions meals. Uh, and that's kind of a semantic search result. So we'll get 
to that in just a second, but that's super exciting. Um, but if I scroll down here, you can see that I can, I can see all the notebooks that mention food inspections, uh, the jobs. So these are the ETL processes that actually populate that table. Any queries that have been written uh, on any of the food inspections tables, uh, DB SQL dashboards, um, and Unity catalog volumes, and so on. So you can see that there's just a ton of information that's brought back just by that basic keyword search. And you'll also notice that um, we have kind of redesigned the UI a little bit, so it's full page now. Uh, so it just gives you a lot more space to look at. Uh, and then the, we have these quick filters on the right here. So I can, I can click on tables if I only want to see tables, uh, notebooks if I just want to see notebooks, uh, queries, and so on. You get the idea. But the idea is, you know, I can pull back my initial search results list and then filter through those results to, to, to get to something a bit more specific that I'm looking for. And, and th um, this is incredible for people who have never like done something like this before. I remember like pre-Databricks days, you would have to like know what's called metadata. And even to do a keyword search, being able to just to see like what's in tables or the names of the tables, but now like look at all of these different options, Git folders, libraries, anything that's registered in Unity Catalog. If you haven't done anything like this before, it was a near impossible, very time consuming, painful task, not even taking into account the semantic part, just the plain yeah. keywords. So incredible stuff so far. This is a, a game changer in my opinion. Yeah, and that's one of the beauties of UC, really. I mean, it's not just like Hive Metastore where it's just a bunch of tables and columns and stuff like that. This is really everything related to your data and AI uh, workload. So it's your tables, your models, your jobs, your queries, your dashboards, everything. Uh, and then we use all that information to power the search. The, the other thing you'll notice here as well is uh, this little uh, popularity icon here. So we're actually now boosting search results based on the popularity uh, of that. So you can see that this one is, is obviously a demo environment, so it's not super uh, well used, but it's been queried 20 times in the last 30 days. So it's, um, you know, it's relatively popular. And the idea here is that tables and assets that are not so popular will, will appear lower down in the search results because people are probably want the ones that everybody else is using. So we're kind of crowdsourcing a lot of the uh, information a, a little bit to power some of the search as well. And then if I click into food inspections uh, for a second, it gets really interesting. So I'm looking at Catalog Explorer now, and really this is kind of the UI to um, the Unity Catalog. So I can see uh, tables and catalogs and schemas and volumes, sample data, and all this different information. But really what I wanted to show you here is this table food inspections has this amazing metadata that's attached to it. So this big comment here uh, is all about this table. And you'll also notice that each one of the um, fields uh, or columns is also uh, has a great, uh, has good metadata. Now this is, you know, as long as I've worked in, in, in kind of the data space, no one likes to document their data and nobody really ever does it. But the beauty is here, again, leveraging data bricks IQ, all of this stuff was generated by AI. So if I was to show you a different table, such as this uh, drift metrics one, you can see kind of how you do that. So uh, I'm in a different table here and you can see this is the, a the AI here. So this is like an, an, a private LLM that, that we've trained on the schema of the data. It's now suggesting a way to describe this table uh, and I can accept that uh, verbatim or I can actually add my own uh, company jargon, my own terms, my own kind of metadata in there as well. And we also do that at the column level as well. So uh, if I click this, it would then go ahead and generate all of those comments. Yeah, and th there are entire teams that are dedicated to documenting you know, master data management. It's a big issue with companies that have thousands or tens of thousands of tables, each with dozens of comments. And just reading through this AI generated comment, um, incredible. It, it talks not just about generally this food contains food inspections, but it's talking about like the details, uh, food safety across areas and facilities. I mean, that that's fantastic. It's yeah. automated a lot of the time consuming aspects of data architecture, data management. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. So 
if I go back now to just go back to the home page um, and carry on like doing some more searching, we can see now how the search engine actually leverages all of that metadata, all of that AI generated metadata to improve the search results. And the other thing I want to show is like the concept of natural language query. So the search engine is much more than just keyword search. I can actually type uh, things like show me data about Chicago and hit return. So now uh, this is kind of different, right? It's actually taking um, uh, a, a query that I've asked in natural language, it knows that I need to see something. It knows that I want to see some data, and it knows it needs to be about Chicago. And you can see here that it's pulled back lots of content. Obviously, this one is pulled back first because the name Chicago is in the name. But then you can see it's also using um, uh, the metadata that was generated by the AI uh, to boost the search results as well. So this is kind of an example of how leveraging uh, Databricks IQ and really using uh, AI generated comments will really make the search even more powerful. And the next thing to show is, is um, you know, it, it goes beyond kind of natural language query understanding. And it, it, we also have semantic search capabilities in here. And what we mean by semantic search is it, it, it will find stuff that means something similar to what you've searched on. It doesn't have to be an exact um a keyword match so if i say uh for example on this uh show me data about the midwest now you can see um that it's pulled back again the food inspections table because midwest is mentioned in here but it's also pulled um i don't know west coast that's kind of interesting that's pulled that one back but it's pulled back this regions table as well because it has information uh, you know about chicago and chicago is in the midwest um, that's so that's it's, super it's, awesome yeah. yeah i mean the idea here is really that um you know with semantic search you don't have to know what you're looking for you just kind of have to have an idea and you're just kind of saying to databricks just give me everything you've got that's kind of related to this idea and i'll filter through the results and figure out what i need based on that yeah and, and for the phrase, you know, democratization, this is incredible. Like Midwest could be defined as, you know, Chicago, Cleveland, Cincinnati, et cetera. And this will find it all. And it's not just the tables, but, if, you know, I see notebook on the bottom. There's like a, a, a plot, a graph that has Midwest yeah. in there. I mean, just to expand the knowledge, it's all of your assets being searchable uh, intelligently, um, not just keyword matching. This is uh, Utterly fantastic, I think. Yeah, and help the I whole need industry. Get, need to get some information about Cleveland and stuff like that in here <laughs> just to see if that uh, actually does come back. I need to set that up. That's a that's a great idea. Um, you know, another another thing that as a data practitioner I might want to do is I'm always looking for data to join onto my core data set. So let's say I you know I wanted to join some geographic or geospatial data here. I can say something like, um, you know. Uh, what should I use for geospatial data? And this is, you know, again, it's using that semantic search. Obviously, here you can see geospatial was a direct keyword match, but this geographic table. It's similar. It knows that geographic and geospatial are essentially the same thing. So it's bringing back uh, the search results there. Okay. So um, as well as you know improvements to basic keyword search and improvements to the overall UI, you know we're really making search more intelligent by powering it with with metadata that's also generated by AI, uh, investing in natural query, natural language understanding in the search box, investing in um uh, uh semantic search capabilities to really uh give our customers the best possible experience and it's not just this search interface that uh, all that databricks iq and that kind of ai engine makes better um if i can just show you for a second over here if i go into uh my query so here i'm gonna I'm gonna write a new sql query uh so if i create a query 
Um, so here, I'm actually using Databricks Assistant. I'm going to use it to help me write a query. And Databricks Assistant is also aware of this, uh, of our search engine uh, that's, you know, powered by Databricks IQ to make Databricks Assistant a lot more contextually relevant and a lot more powerful. You couldn't do what I'm about to do on using ChatGPT or even, you know, uh, other kind of data practitioner co-pilots because it just doesn't have the context of Unity Catalog. Um, so what I can do uh, in this example is let's ask the assistant to summarize food inspections by result. So uh, that's kind of, you know, it needs to know a lot of things about the data to be able to give me a SQL statement um, from that natural language uh, query. Uh, and as you can see here, it knows that there's a food inspections table. It knows that there's a result column in that food inspections table. And it knows that from the AI comments that it, if it groups by result, it's going to give me the type of information that I'm looking for. So you can see it's giving me a nice little SQL statement here. Uh, I didn't have to kind of know SQL in this example. Um, uh, so it's going to help people who are not as uh, savvy with SQL uh, to get started a lot quicker. And I can just literally cut and paste this, um, this SQL statement over into my query editor here and run it. And boom, there you go. I've got some uh, results back right away uh, to, you know, like this is actually actionable insights now. That's all kind of given to me through the power of AI, you know, powered by, by Databricks like you. All right. Well, Richard, that was super eye-opening, fantastic uh, demo and walkthrough. And uh, it really shows the power of, you know, helping operational efficiencies like that, uh, you know, assistant for code generation, the democratization play. Um, and then I also like how you brought up Unity Catalog. It's the central aspect. So if you're a customer and you're not actively using Catalog, you can now see this is one benefit by registering all of your assets in there makes it uniquely searchable. I love Richard how you you know said of all these other co-pilots don't have that uh, nuance of you know contextual search um, without having it registered. So that makes you you know everyone whether it's doing hands-on SQL or more democratized non-technical people finding assets, Unity Catalog helps make it all possible and Databricks IQ. Uh, like enables all of that intelligence behind it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible what Gen AI has, you know, kind of brought to the table over the last year or two. And you know, we just see it as something that we have to bake into the platform to realize the mission of Databricks, which is, you know, bringing data and AI to the masses, democratizing the ability to, to work and get insights from data, whether you're, you know, a, 20 year seasoned uh, data engineer or a hack like me, you know, they can just hack SQL or, or maybe just somebody who's a business user that just knows how to ask questions in, 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 uh, in English or whatever the native language is, you know, and they have no coding experience at all. So all of these, uh, all of these different people can now benefit and, and get value from the platform. Well, all fantastic. So if people want to try this out and they already have Databricks Unity Catalog, um, they can just go in and, and start using yeah. it now. Yeah, it's enabled by default in everybody's workspace, the search stuff and the AI generated comments. Uh, Assistant um, is already available. People can play with that. It's still in public preview. It's coming out uh, into as general, generally available in early April, like, for, you know, not April Fool's Day, the day after that. Um, uh, quick plug, please, in the in the comments, uh, we're going to, we're, we're going to put a link to um, the mm -hmm. launch blog that we uh, that we published when we yeah. when we uh, implemented all of this new intelligence search stuff. So please click on that link and go check out uh, the more detailed blog. It kind of explains what I've been explaining in you know a, a little bit more of a professional and uh, <laughs> you know a little a little clearer. So. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Ori.